Hey everybody, this is Big Al 2K6, and welcome to, uh, I guess you could call this a, a Big Al discussion, because I'm, I'm an unoriginal faggot. Um, I honestly have no witty title for this, so uh, today I have a uh, guest, uh, Darkscream217. Sup, everyone. And Jim81Jim, otherwise known as uh, Games Good Me Bad. Hey, guys. And today we're going to talk about uh, a very a, a pretty touchy subject that's happened throughout the past few weeks, and it's going to be about Muslim, uh, Muslims. But more importantly, we're going to be talking about a mosque being built near Ground Zero. Now, I, I touched upon this, I touched upon this a few a uh, few days ago in a few vlogs of mine. But I thought it would be pretty interesting to talk about it with a few more people. So here's what's happening: uh, Pat Condell, aka the racist, uh, not racist, the atheist deity. <laughs> I, I just find it ironic that he's an atheist, being, but he's wor being worshipped as a fucking god. But he made a video so saying, no mosques near Ground Zero. And apparently, he was very misinformed, because there is no mosque being grill uh, built at Ground Zero. It's going to be built two miles away. So, so far, what do you guys think about this? Like, why do you think he's getting so... Why do you think people are getting so upset that there's a mosque being built near Ground Zero? And why should people? And why do you? And why do you? My, my question is: Why are the only ones being upset about this atheists? Um, I wish my friend uh, K87 Jury, aka the Hated Washu, was around with um, at this time. But he and I are at two completely different cities, and um, I haven't heard from him in a while. But I wanted his two cents on a lot of things during this whole Muslim debacle on YouTube and from the from the draw Muhammad day all the way to now. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Um, you know, I've been friends with uh, a couple atheists, but um, we never got on that subject. Really, I I'm really not sure why, because a mosque is a type of whole... Uh, it, a holy ground or something a like that. A mosque is a place of worship for Muslims. That's basically what it is. Uh, all a right. Church. Um, well, it's probably because they. It could be because of the whole. It's probably. It, I know it's related to 9 11. So. It is. Because uh, Pat Condell said in the video, and I'm, I'm going to try and quote him as best as I can, but he basically said that the people who brought. The people who destroyed our towers are now being allowed to build a place of worship near. Yeah, he's. Yeah, the asshole's wrong. Anyway, um, I, I guess it's because, well, the peop, uh, the terrorists who, you know, caused 9-11 were, in fact, Muslims. Yeah, that, that's exactly... Extremists, extremists, not, not, not regular people, extremists, obviously. But it doesn't mean everyone should get blamed for it. Like, and that's exactly why he has a problem with it. The people who th flew the flew the planes. Yes, there were planes. Get the fuck over it. Uh, the, the people who flew the planes to the towers, they were Muslim extremists, but he's saying the religion that killed many people are now being allowed to build a church. It completely ignoring the fact that there were Muslims inside the towers working. <laughs> uh, of the, th of the uh, couple thousand people who died in 9-11, uh, uh, of the couple thousand people who died in the Twin Towers, a large majority of, th of them were Muslims. I uh, know. I mean, they were called a... They, it was called the World Trade Center for a fucking reason. But, uh, Jim, what, what's your take on all this? Because this is interesting. On uh, Pat Condell or on... On, on the, the whole, on the whole the mosque, mosque build, uh, building a mosque near Ground Zero. I, I really don't care. I mean, like I said, it, it, well, like I was telling you earlier, I mean, if they bought the land and the permits are fine, I don't see why they should have any trouble building whatever they want to build. And to further that point, I mean, uh, just doing a Google search of the surrounding areas, two miles, you know, a two-mile search from ground zero, you'll find at least six or seven different Muslim uh, institutes, whether they're schools or mosques or educational centers. I mean, they're already in the neighborhoods. So, Interesting. I, I, and this, you know, I think kind of highlights one of the points of, well, l let me start with this. Uh, I don't think it's just atheists who are upset with this. I, I started looking around a little bit, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm seeing a mixture of different things. A lot of uh, ultra neocon kind of right wing conservatives are, are upset about this, and then you've got uh, people like Pat Condell in England 
Well, why is he focusing on 9-11? Why isn't he focusing instead on 7-11? Why not deal with something on his home turf like the bus oh. bombings that happened over there? Oh. You know, uh, why is it uh, that he's so interested in American politics? And what, was it, what would his opinion even matter? He's not American. I mean, this is yeah. a homegrown issue, right? So Pat Condell's, you know, take on this isn't worth shit. I'm sorry, Pat, but it isn't. I don't well, go over I... to England and tell you what to build. Don't, don't tell us what to build over here. And, you know, if you say that they can't build a mosque, okay, well, then what's the zone? Is it two miles out? Is it five miles out? Is it 10, 20, 100? Where do you draw the line? When are you comfortable? Uh, you know, how far away do you have to push these people? Because obviously you're afraid of them. And I, I think that fear is based on, again, in Pat Condell's case, the extremists he sees over there, they're different than they are over here. Uh, you'll see a lot of really outspoken Muslim or Islamic groups over in England who are a little more violent, who are a little uh, more aggressive and outspoken. And so, you know, I think that's kind of what he thinks it's like over here, too, but it's not. And uh, it just it seems silly to me to say, oh, you can't build a mosque here because somebody blew up a building over there. Well, Timothy McVeigh blew, you know, blew up a building, too. Does that mean everywhere around Oklahoma City? That was Oklahoma City, right? Yes, Timothy McVeigh? I believe so. So does that mean, yeah, does that mean everybody around the uh, FBI uh, center down there that he, you know, drove his fucking van into can't uh, build up a Christian church? Because he was Christian, but he blew up a building, right? So we can't have any churches in the area. So I guess we've got to cordon off a two-mile area because they're, those guys are fucking nuts. If you remember the Inquisition, right? They're unstable motherfuckers. <laughs> now, obviously, you know, they're, they're – now you said uh, I was talking to you earlier. Obviously, they have something against the Muslim population. So, what was that ultimate solution that you said to me? Like, if they don't like Muslims, what should we do? Well, yeah, let's take it out to its logical conclusion, or you know, as far as we can take it out. If you if you really think they're so dangerous, if they're so horrible, and there's nothing of value to them, then let's get some guns and let's kill them. We'll build up some camps. We'll go and hunt them down. We'll kill them and their kids. Because then you'll feel safe, right? I mean, that, that'll make you feel safe. Because they're obviously such terrible people, they have to be exterminated. Oh, that doesn't sound like anything anyone would ever do in the past. That doesn't sound like, you know, some crazy dictator in the 1940s who feared um, an, another religious group of people. Godwin's law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, right. but that, that's what it's starting to sound like. It's saying, like, we should all be like Hitler and do the Holocaust when actually it's a very sick and inhumane idea. We shouldn't. No, we shouldn't do that because not all of them, not all Muslims are psychotic. Tell that to people like Pat Condell and Drinking with Bob. Well, those two can go fuck themselves, man. Well, they're, t they're picking up on one feature of the people who flew the planes. Yeah, they were uh, terrorists. They had uh, an extreme religious belief, but that's, a, that's the point, extreme. They were the extreme group of that Look, religion there's, there's following, no... you know, a following uh, I insane ideas and flying a fucking plane into a building. I mean, how crazy would it be then if uh, a feminist group said, hey, you know what, the guys who flew those planes, they were men. So men are obviously dangerous. We have to cordon off a two-mile area around the World Trade Center because men were on that fucking plane. I, I mean, what characteristics are you going to judge that by? Uh, they were dark too, so we got to get rid of anybody who's not pure white. So what? What do you? What? What's the safe zone? I mean, what are you left with? You've got a population of white women basically living in the middle of New York. That that and then everybody's safe, right? Because then we got rid of them all. Everybody who might be dangerous, who's got a dick, who is a you know a Muslim and has dark skin. Damn. It's just they're they're picking up on something. It's just it's stupid. It's stupid. There's no way to justify it. These people bought the land. They filled out the permits. Let them build whatever the fuck they want. That's how this country works. And uh, you know what? It may bite us in the ass. Who knows? Maybe maybe it'll be a Hamas training center, but I really highly doubt it. Because like I said, there are six or seven different uh, Muslim facilities or buildings, properties, whatever you want to call them, in the direct fucking area. And I haven't heard shit from them. Have you? Have you heard about these training installations and you know all the suicide bombings happening? Because they're not. It just seems like somebody wanted to bitch about something, didn't like Muslims, and figured, ah, oh, this will fucking do. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me, because really, I, I don't care about the fucking mosque at Ground Zero. Uh, what concerns me more is the Gulf oil spill near my location. That concerns me more than where they're putting a, a, a fucking religious uh, temple at a certain location. Um, let's, let's see, uh, what's worse to you? Uh, some religious people want to put a location near a tragedy event? Or an oil spill that's pretty fucking big, and it's killing off the fish, thus uh, ruining jobs for fishermen, ruining the seafood industry, and what have you. 
What seems worse to you guys? Oh well, obviously the Muslims because they're they're dangerous, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, they're 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 terrible. Yeah, we gotta we gotta get rid of them. But uh, yeah, no, that's my advice to Pat Condell and the like. If you really don't like Muslims, do something about it. Go get your gun and take care of the problem. Otherwise, shut the fuck up because you sound like an idiot. Oh, that's my advice. Also, like, like I, I was, I got into an argument with this, with this stupid ass Pat Condell worshiping motherfucker. I was like, I was like, okay, they're like, oh, Muslims are dangerous. Like it's being built. It, they're building a mosque. Okay, I think the, I think the problem isn't that it's bi being built near Ground Zero. I think the problem is that it's being built and it's Muslim related. I think that's the biggest problem. I'm like, uh, you do realize it says in the Constitution you're allowed to worship, you're allowed to worship, uh, practice any fucking religion you want. And this guy was like, oh, you stupid, you silly Americans, you always bring up that Constitution. Right, right. <laughs> that's our fucking, that's our fucking, wow, you're, that dude's retarded. That's like our fucking guidelines for the country, you asshole. I'm like, okay, you don't like the Constitution? Okay, let's burn it and have anarchy rule everywhere. <laughs> okay, let's burn the Constitution and kill anyone who doesn't worship God. There you go. There, there, there's a solution there. Right, and did Pat Condell or any of these people who are so against this mosque being built, did they list any reason, any reasonable reason, as to why it shouldn't be built? Did they have some conclusive proof that the moment that building went up, something terrible was going to happen? Or the people related to building that building were somehow linked to terrorist organizations or anything like that? Nothing, right? I, I, it's basically they found an issue to bitch about. And I find it offensive, to be honest. Uh, you know, here, here these people get killed in the World Trade Center. They're not talking about them, are they? They're not doing follow-up videos or wondering how did the families of the victims, you know, how are they doing, uh, you know, what's going on in their lives? No, no, it's let's jump onto an issue about something that, you know, I can relate to. I hate Muslims, so I'll talk about this because it has to do with Muslims. And it's just, he's latching onto it. it. This could have been built anywhere, I think, and he would still probably be upset about it. But, but yeah. This, <laughs> I mean, I, I, this is, to be honest, this is a non-issue. It, it really is. Cause like, like, no. like you said, they, bi uh, they bought the permit. And it says in the Constitution that you are allowed to, as, as if you're not infringing anybody's rights or or liberties, you can worship whatever fucking god you want. And not to mention, well, I mean, aside from that, fuck the Constitution. They paid for it in money. Uh, you know, it's just business wise, they bought it. It's theirs. That's the end of the fucking discussion. Yep. I, I mean, uh, what what uh, what does Pat Condell want? Does he want? Uh, you know, the people who sold the uh, land to give it back, you know, give back the money and take the land back. is, Or here, better yet, Pat, if you really dislike this, raise the money and go buy the land from them. Then you win, right? Then then the mosque isn't going to go there. Go buy them out if you want to get rid of it. Not to mention, it's not like they're even building a new building. They're taking an old building and renovating it to be a mosque. I mean, fuck, you know, I, I would have been even happier if they built a mosque right on Ground Zero because then at least something would be being built on that fucking ground. <laughs> How long has it been? Well, you know, I thought we were supposed to have this giant glittering glass fucking uh, tower that raised 50 stories into the sky, you know, that was going to be America's pride and shit. What's the status on that? I, I don't know, to be honest. Exactly, uh, nobody I, does. I was, I was wondering about that, too. Out. I'm like, are they ever going to, like, you know, rebuild? I mean, we've rebuilt, you know. There have been blue tarps managed... around that area for years now. Dude, we've rebuilt New Orleans, or at least a good chunk of it. I mean, imagine what would happen if we still haven't gotten around to fixing that uh, after five years of Katrina. You know how embarrassing that would be? I mean, okay, you know, I could give them the benefit of the doubt that might take a lot of money and we're in a shitty, you know, we're in a really shitty state when it comes to the economy. I can understand that we may not be able to recreate those towers at that said time and moment, but I really... It's been almost 10 years. Wait, hold on. Yeah, almost 10 years. It's it's going to be nine years soon. And nothing. Yeah, yeah it, it, like I said, it, or, and I agree with you guys. It's a non-issue. It's just stupid. They bought it. It's theirs. I see no reason why they shouldn't have a right to put it up there. They're not hurting anybody. They're not associated with anything that's dangerous. And I don't care what an Englishman thinks. He doesn't live here. And, uh, like... About, about the rebuilding the towers, I think we should do just that. Just rebuild them. No, uh, like, um, I, oh, what was his name? Uh, Penn and Teller. I think they did an episode about 9-11 conspiracy theories. Yeah, they did. And uh, Penn was like, 
Let's not even build a monument. Let's just rebuild the towers, period. You know, let's rebuild the towers as they were. Well, I heard that um, this isn't a conspiracy thing, but when um, in my American history class of high school, we actually covered 9-11 before the semester ended. And they said the reason why the towers collapsed, no conspiracy shit, whatever, it's because it's a, something about structural fall. I, I, the terrorists didn't even expect the buildings to collapse. Um, and when it and when they did, they pretty much orgasmed over that. Like, uh, well, well, here's uh, I don't mean to turn this into a conspiracy theory topic, but this is just this is what it said in the report. Because the to twin towers were built so differently than any other building at the time, they they and be well, how, most buildings are made with like steel, like a steel map, uh, uh, not map, uh, net. This building, it, it was just like a, a core. With a shell around it, and because it was built so differently, it weakened much faster than any other building would. Right, but then yeah. again, who you know who builds a building to specifications to take two direct hits from a plane? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like <laughs> that's that's the last thing I think they're concerned with. And uh, but anyway, back on topic. Uh, another thing, uh, another thing that I want to ask you guys. Uh, this is something that I actually brought brought uh, brought up with Subric. You you you're not you're called a racist when you make fun of Jewish people, but you can't you can't call someone a racist for making fun of Muslims. No, I'll even go one step further. You're called a racist even if you talk about racism and not even use racial slurs. I mean, remember remember how you told me about all the people who commented on Amazing Atheists' uh, reviews on the Star Wars prequels? Yeah. And how everyone said, oh, he's really a racist because he's talking about racism. Blech. See, you're even labeled a racist for that. Well, like, the point I'm trying to make is, like, all these people making videos about how horrible Muslims are, um, you call them a racist because, let's face it, 90% of the population of Muslims are Arab. They, they all come from Arab countries, and they have dark skin. So, obvious, so, and... When they bring up the whole Muslim, like when I say the word Muslim, I'm pretty sure that you guys think Arab, right? I am I safe in that assumption? Um, possibly. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the first image that pops into my head. Like if you said Jew, I'd have an image that popped in, or Christian, I'd have an image that would pop in. So yeah. my my thing is, you know, the people who say these horrible things about Muslims, they always bring race involved. Like they'll always they'll throw around the word sand nigger. Y you know what I mean? So, and then you just call them a racist, and they're like, oh, well, it's not racist, because Islam's a religion, derp. Um, that's a stupid cover-up. That really is. By the way, can't you be racist towards religion, too? Well, Ju like I said, Jewish people. Even though even yeah. though um, Judaism is a, is a religion, it's also considered a race, even though most Jewish people are clearly Caucasian. Well, yeah, but if you look into the historical underpinnings of why there's confusion over being called either an anti-Semite, a racist, or a bigot when you're talking about Jews, I mean, that goes back to the Nazis. Uh, they had a problem with Americans because we looked at uh, the Jewish uh, Jews as two different things. One is a race and one is a religion, where they saw it just purely as an ethnicity. They were like, Jews are Jews. That's who we've got to wipe out. But Americans said, oh, no, well, you've got Jews, and then you've got people who are Jewish. So I think that's kind of where some of the confusion stems from. But... Uh, if you call somebody a sand nigger, that, that's racism because you're calling them a, a sand nigger based on the skin color, mm -hmm. right? Uh, based on where they come from in the world. Uh, now, if you wanted to make fun of the religion of Islam, well, then you wouldn't technically be a racist. You'd be something else. But, yeah, if you, if you start throwing out sand nigger, then, yeah, I think that's fair to say that you're a racist towards somebody. <laughs> but, yeah, like, and it, and it pisses me off because, like, they'll call you an idiot. Oh, oh, we're not being racist. We're attacking the religion. Yeah, but you're throwing the word... I mean, it's really fucking stupid to be throwing the word Sandiger around then and say you're not a racist because you're attacking the religion. Right. Well, I mean, if they were going to say... Um, yeah, it, it, how would they even structure that? Okay, so they're going to say, well, I'm not being racist because I'm calling, what, Muhammad a Sandiger and he's part of the religion? So if I call Jesus a kite, am I not being racist because I'm talking about the religion, yeah. right? It just seems stupid. It, it seems like semantics. It seems like they're just dancing with language. 
backtracking and shit like that. Right. Now, another, uh, let's see, another issue. Um, I touched on this a while ago, but I want to hear you guys' thoughts. The whole South Park thing. Now, uh, I'm sure you're... I'm sure you're familiar. South Park aired an episode where Muhammad oh, yeah. was in a bear suit, and a small group, a small group, this is this is the key point here, a small group of Muslims, I, I they might have been extremists, I can't remember, I think they, they, but they were like a radical Muslim group. They got pissed off, and they're like, you need to stop doing this, or something bad will happen, and Viacom pulled the episode and heavily censored it. But for some reason, Thunderfoot and his Thunderflock and people, you know, who think like them, they're making it an issue with all Muslims. Right. Smartest business decision uh, Comedy Central ever did. Uh, I, I think it was nothing but business, pure and simple. And it uh, the issue bores me, personally. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I really could care less uh, if people want to go draw Muhammad. Good for you, sitting in your suburbs, you know, in the middle of Missouri. I'm sure that's really going to make a statement. But uh, if you want to, you know, hop on a fucking plane and go to the middle of, I don't know, Saudi Arabia and draw Muhammad getting fucked by a cock... <laughs> You know, then we'll see how brave you are, and you know, standing up for your freedom of speech and shit. But yeah, that, that's the like you were mentioning. Now, that's what really got me. People saying, "Oh, Thunderfoot has has, has so much courage for standing up for free speech by drawing Muhammad." I'm like, are you sitting on his ass the whole time? Like, are you fucking kidding me? He's sitting in the comfort of his own home, making fun of a religion that's thousands of miles away, and they can't do anything to him. How the fuck is that courageous in any way? Yeah, it's it's not. It, it, it's what everybody else did. You got a bunch of thirteen-year-old suburbanites, uh, you know, fighting fighting the good fight, and uh, you know, protected by mom and dad in the middle of their uh, you know little middle-class house. I'm sure they're in a great deal of danger from the five idiots on that forum that uh, told Comedy Central they were upset. Oh God, <laughs> I it's old it's old media. Old media turned it into a big deal, and then uh, people on the internet ran with it. And what happened? So what's the follow-up? Uh, did freedom spread across the Middle East now because Thunderfoot and his brigade drew Muhammad? Any, no, it was quite anything the opposite. accomplished? <laughs> quite the opposite, actually. No, but because of what Thunderfoot and thousands of other people on the internet did, they didn't, you know, spread their free speech brigade. They didn't, sp they didn't spread free speech. They actually in men uh, managed to censor an entire country. Right, and it comes down, too, to the motivation behind the action. I mean, it, okay, so you want to make a statement that uh, freedom of speech is important and you should have the right to express yourself. All right, that's, that's noble. Great for you. But uh, what's your motivation behind that action? And it, it doesn't come across as genuine from Thunderfoot and these other people. It seems like, oh, you're just a bunch of stupid religious people, and uh, we're going to make fun of you, and we're going to do whatever we want, and that, that's not really freedom of speech. You're just kind of being an asshole. So is that supposed to inspire them? Are they supposed to look at your actions and go, oh my god, a douchebag from the middle of nowhere just uh, drew Muhammad. I, suddenly, he's opened my eyes. Yeah, to be honest, Thunderfoot now gives atheists a bad name. I'm sorry, he gives them a fucking horrible name. And every other, and every other video is just him making fun of Muslims. Like, like at, at first, it, he might, at first, I could, you know, I was on the same page as him, because I can understand why he's getting upset. But then... He starts making all these videos like, "Oh, my finger's mightier than your god," and uh, th he's just—he uh, just made these videos. He's being a great A douchebag. I'm sorry, he's really being a douchebag. And like, he's just making these videos. It—it uh, it, it has nothing to do with free speech. He just wants an excuse to make fun of people. Mm. Right, and I got—I got no problem with that. I mean, if you want to be an asshole and call somebody out, or be a racist, or a bigot, or just a jerk to somebody, that's awesome. Knock yourself out, but at least be honest while you're doing it. That's all I care about. And it just doesn't come across as genuine with the drama Muhammad day. It doesn't seem like it was a freedom of speech issue, just a oh look, you know, uh, we're gonna be dicks and ha ha ha, and that's what it came across as. Mm -hmm. And look what happened. <laughs> right, but I mean, what what kind of change were they hoping to inspire? What did it do? It did nothing. If anything, all it did was just piss off the people who were already angry. You know, you really have accomplished nothing. You've you put yourself in no risk. You haven't uh, broken down any barriers. You haven't changed any laws. You've accomplished nothing, which is exactly what you should expect from you two. <laughs> you know, what What are you expecting? Some civil rights march in spite, you know, like the next Martin Luther King's going to be uh, some fucking vlogger? Give me a break. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Well, I think this is. I think that's all we can. I think that's uh, all I wanted to cover for now. Uh, any, yeah. any closing thoughts, guys? No, I'm good. What about you? Yeah. Oh, you good? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, people have too much fucking times on their hands, or too much fucking time on their hands. Uh, for all these people, you know, the draw Muhammad people and all the people bitching about uh, the World Trade Center and all of that stuff. Just shut the fuck up. You're whining. It's just it's annoying. Yeah, like you know, Darkstream was saying, uh, you've got a, a giant oil leak in the middle of the Gulf Coast because, or, or uh, you know what I mean? Because what? Because the president of BP wanted to skimp on a couple of dollars for a fucking few safety devices, so that wouldn't happen. And now he's making commercials talking about uh, how he's very sorry, like he gives a shit. <laughs> hey, you know, th there are real issues in the world to deal with, and this seems like a non-issue. All of these seem like non-issues. They're not important in any way. I mean, if you're going to change something, be specific, and do something that's going to make a difference. But uh, sitting on your ass and making YouTube videos really doesn't change a fucking thing. Agreed. Agreed. Even though I do it all the time. <laughs> But uh, yeah, well, this has been uh, this has been uh, a big Al discussion, and uh, <clears throat> thanks for watching. This is Big Al Two K Six. Dark Screen Two One Seven. It's Jim. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.